Uh, now, I want to tell you something uh, concerning uh, the good things which are keeping people out of heaven. You see, uh, many people think because I'm doing good, uh, I will go to heaven automatic. No. There are so many people who are really, really good. They are really good. They do everything so right, but they, they will not see heaven. And I have to explain it so clearly so that everybody can be able to understand. You see, many people focus on doing the good things and they don't focus on uh, they don't focus on a heaven and they don't focus on what sends people to heaven. They only focus about, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, uh, I am better in one way or another, I am better in this, I am better in that. But they don't focus on what really matters, what is salvation. They don't uh, focus on that. They don't focus on how to be saved. They don't focus on that. They only focus about me, 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 me. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. So many people are involved in doing legitimate things than the things of God. You, you, you want to be the best person in that event. You want to be the best person in the village. You want to be the most respected person. Uh, many degrees here and there. Which is really good. Which is absolutely so good. But are you concerned about the things of God? Are you really concerned about uh, the, uh, the, the works of God? Remember what the Bible says. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And everything else will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. But many people don't seek first the kingdom of God. What they seek is to be good into the society, to be good unto the people, to, to try and uh, help the needy, help the poor, uh, uh, build churches, do this and that. And, and everybody says, wow, that's, that's really a good man. That's really a good woman. But they are not focused on the things of God. And that's where the whole big debate comes in, all right? So God does not tell people to leave their normal duties. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying stop doing what you, 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 you are doing. No, the Bible tells us occupy until he comes. But he tells you to focus on the things of God. He tells you to focus on the things which God has uh, ordained to give you salvation. Put him first. Put him first in everything that you do. You see, uh, many people... They, they, they kind of try to make God to wait. They, they tell God, God, no, no, just hold on. Let me finish this thing. Let me finish looking for a job. Let me finish doing this and that. And then I'll come back to you. You're the second option. You see, God tells you to, to involve him in every deed and everything that you're doing every day. Involve him. You, you're going to uh, look for a job, pray and tell God, God, uh, help me to get the right job. Help me to meet the right connections, to meet the right people and to do the right things. But you, what do you do? You tell God, hold on, let me look for a job first. Hold on, let me go and meet that person for that business. Hold on, let me go and do this. It's, it's like you're telling God is coming. I want to be involved in your life, but no, 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 hold on. Let me do something else. I'll come to you back later when I'm successful. Many people think God wants to see your success. Now I'm successful. Now I can give millions of money in the church. I can give to the ministry. I can do this. Now I'm successful by myself. Now God, you can come. Let me. It's, it's like you're making God to be a kid. Hold on. Just wait there. I'll come back when I have some money. I'll buy you some sweets. That's exactly how the people try to portray God. No, but he tells you, I want to be in your life. I want to do everything. With you, I want to be there. You're being tempted in something. Just tell God, okay, God, right now I'm going to do a very shoddy business. Please help me. You told us that you'll give us a way to escape. Give me a way to escape and give me something better. I don't know. I'm just heading there to do something so bad. But please help me. Help me. You told us that you'll walk with us. Let me tell you something. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new. There is no temptation which is bigger than what man has already uh, been tempted by. And God says he will bring you up out of all that. He will make you understand and see things in a different way. He will give you an escape plan. That's exactly what the Apostle Paul tells us. And now I want to tell you a couple of things which will leave people out of heaven. Just like that. People will be left out of heaven. And they were great people. Now let's look at the book of Luke. Luke 17, 26. It's, it tells us. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the day of the Son of Man. When Jesus is coming, it will just be the same way that the, the days of Noah were. 
Now listen to this. Verse 27. They did eat. Now look at this. Tell me if these people are doing anything wrong. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed all of them. These people were good. They were buying, they were selling, they were eating, they were drinking, which is absolutely fine. There's no one who is telling you don't eat. There's no one who is telling you don't drink. Don't do, don't build your houses. Don't give out uh, people in marriage. No. But these people were so much engaged into this thing, they never thought about the coming of the, uh, uh, of the flood. The same way is going to happen even in our days. Now listen to this. Likewise, verse 28, likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot. Now look at Lot also. They did eat, they drank, they brought, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. Do those things uh, seem to be bad things? No, these people are just planting. They're just cultivating. They're do God told us, whoever shall not work shall not eat. They're doing normal things. They're planting, they're, they're, they're harvesting, they're giving in marriage, they're eating, they're drinking. Normal things. But where is God? They did not want to do anything concerning God and, his, and what he had said. Remember, remember in that time of Noah. Noah, the Bible says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He must have been telling people, hey guys, please, let's complete this act together because the flood is coming. And people are saying, no, 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 I have to go and do this. No, no, I have to go and do this. No, no, tomorrow, I, I'll see about it. I'll think about it. I, I'll put that in my schedule. That's exactly what people do nowadays. You tell somebody, let's go to church. Come, let's do some Bible study. No, 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 I'm busy. This weekend I'm having this. This weekend we're doing this. No, no, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. People are just consumed by the things of the world. And they don't care. They're just saying, no, 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 God is, God is still yet far to come. It's not now. No, it's not coming today. Let me do a couple of things. I, I listen to your story later. Now listen to this. Uh, verse 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. The moment Lot came out, and definitely they must have seen Lot going out with his family, and they said, ah, you Lot, you're just, I, I think you're always confused. You think uh, uh, our, our land is going to be destroyed? No, 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 there's nothing like that. They saw him, definitely, but they ignored they ignored, they didn't go out with him. And definitely must have told, uh, we see, we always read that story of, of Lot. He told other cousins and aunties and uncles, hey, let's leave. They said, no, 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 we can't leave Sodom. You go and then uh, we are coming back. We are behind you. Now, listen to verse 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, how will the Son of Man be revealed? This is not uh, the second coming of Jesus. Revealing of Jesus Christ will be revealed of his glory. We will see him as he is. That is a day that will be raptured when Jesus will be revealed to the believers. Not when he will be coming back. Those, those are totally two different things. Now, look at that. People are not bothered. People didn't care. People are just saying, no, let me finish something I have to do. I have a degree that I have to go and finish up. I have my master's that I'm doing even in classes. I have this and that. And those are good things. But they kept people out of the presence of God. And they made people get destroyed. Now look at the book of John. Uh, John uh, 2.31. Let me read for you John. John 2.31. There's something here. John 2.31, it says this. <clears throat> Listen to this. Very, very, very wonderful here. John 2, uh, is it 1 John? John 2, 31, 32. Um, I think it's 1 John. Let me see 1 John. 1 John 2, uh, 32. Ah. No, I think, I think I've lost that verse. Let me show you uh, Luke. Luke 14, verse 16. Luke 14, uh, verse 16. Let me show you something else. I think I've lost the, the, that verse of John. Now, listen to Luke uh, 14, 16, what it says. Something very, very profound. It says, Then he said unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many. Now, there was a man who called, he had a supper, and then he called many. He told, hey guys, you can come over. Now, listen to what happened. Verse 17. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were now were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. 
just imagine this guy. He sent letters and he said, hey, you're my good friend. I'm inviting you for this big supper. Come and enjoy with me. Come and sup with me. Come and uh, feast with me. And sends letters to all those people. He was a great man. Now listen to this. Uh, uh, verse, uh, where am I? Uh, I'm lost a bit. 15, 16. All right. 17. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must, uh, I must need go and see it. I pray thee that have me excused. So this guy is a real estate developer. He just said, no, 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 I just bought some piece of land. I have to go and uh, make sure that it's, uh, it's in the right order. I have to go and make the fences. I have to go and uh, make sure that the gate is okay. So please just uh, uh, excuse me. I can't come for that supper. Verse 19, and another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go prove them. I go to prove them and I pray that you have me excused. This guy had just bought some oxen and he says, no, 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 please just, oh, please just excuse me. I've just bought these oxen and I have to prove if they can really work. I have to see if they can work. So excuse me on that supper. So I won't come. Verse 19, and another said, uh, all right, verse 20, and another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. This guy is just newly wed. He says, no, 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 <coughs> I've just married a wife. Excuse me, I have some flu. I've just married a wife and now I can't come. She needs my time. She needs uh, us to discuss. She needs uh, us to think about the honeymoon. She, 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 you see all this, please just excuse me. I can't come. Look, verse, uh, verse what, 21. So the servant came and showed the Lord these things. And the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lane of the city, bring in hither the poor, the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the, servant, and the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and, the, uh, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, for my house may be filled, so that uh, my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And all that happened, all right? Now, look at this story. These people were called to a supper. The same way we have been called. You keep on saying, No, I will not come. Excuse me, uh, I think this Sunday I have this and that. Excuse me, I have just married a wife. Excuse me, there are some uh, programs that I'm installing in my computer, so I, I cannot do that Bible study. Excuse me, uh, I've just bought some plot of land. Excuse me, I can't do this. I am busy doing good things. Now, let me tell you, those are good things that are going to send people to hell. People have forgotten the word of God. People have forgotten doing what is right. People have said, I will not do what is right. I will not follow what God says. I will not look for the gospel. I will not search the gospel. What I'm going to do is, I, I, I'll just imagine, okay, people are going to that supper. Just, just, just take this present for me. No, I can't come. I'm a real estate developer and, and I'm just, I, I have some plots of land that I've just bought. So just t t take this envelope and go and give them and say, tell them I'm really sorry I can't make it. You think God wants you, you think that you, you think you, you're giving him to bribe him for not coming to his supper? That's exactly how people think. Because I gave my offering to the church, I gave my tithes to the church, I built a church, I did this and that, I helped some people in mission to go and, uh, you know, I, 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 I uh, gave some evangelism money. I, 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 it's like I gave some tip. You think that one is going to send you to heaven? No. Unless you hear the gospel, unless you come and you be in fellowship with Jesus Christ, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, which can make God happy. He wants you there in person. So for those who have never had the gospel, for those who have never had fellowship with Jesus Christ, this is the time. The book of uh, Ephesians 1.17 tells us, in whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom you believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You have to hear the word of truth being spoken, which is the gospel of your salvation. And unless you hear it and you put it into your heart, you believe, 
you can never get the Holy Spirit. And the work of the Holy Spirit, he is the earnest, he is the earnest of our inheritance until the praise, until the redemption of the purchased possession. The purchased possession is the new man inside you. So the Holy Spirit is the earnest, is the assurance of redemption, is the assurance. When the Holy Spirit is inside you, you are assured you're going to heaven, you see. So many might be asking, so what's this gospel that you have to believe? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you believe how that Christ died, he shed his blood at the cross, then you are saved. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Just saying, I know Jesus, I know, I believe in Jesus, cannot give you salvation. The Bible tells us even devils believe and tremble. Even devils, they believe, they know there is a Jesus. And when they hear that, they tremble. They get scared because they know what is awaiting them. Don't be like them. You just say, I believe in Jesus. No, you believe in the blood of Jesus, what he did for you at the cross. And once you believe, in that then you're saved my friends so that's that's a very good message about good things which are sending people to hell getting yourself busy 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 with other things which don't matter and leaving the main thing which is the salvation of Jesus Christ get saved brothers and sisters and let's see when he comes he'll not leave you neither will he leave me